Oh, it's got Marmite on my bloody chin. Ah. Oh. Why did I not notice that before we started? I look like, an, I look like a ridiculous old man. Just pretend no one saw that. Hello, ball bags, and welcome to... I've just had a piece of to Marmite and toast. Then I licked the plate. Some of it went on my chin. I'm sorry. What happened? What happened? Get back in there. I eat Marmite. You wouldn't exist if I didn't eat Marmite. I love it. You either love it or you hate it. Or you don't really mind it. Somewhere between 1 and 100. Just put your own score in, whatever you feel. Um, welcome to uh, the a very exciting day on uh, the, this winter into spring, probably into summer by the time we finished it, tournament. By the end of today, we'll know two of the semi-finals. We'll know who's in the first semi-final. This is the first two quarter-finals. There'll be four of these. Uh, two more next week. Uh, I'd like to apologise, first of all, for uh, moving the, the date from last night. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to level up. The the people in charge of the World Snooker 2-Player Championship, uh, the aberration, the blasphemy that that is, I do not recognise it. But they called me up crying, saying, please don't go on tonight. We're just having our final and we'll lose so many viewers and all the money. I said, look, mate, you are parodying what I'm doing two people playing against each other that's ridiculous on a board that's four times as big as a proper board it's like something freddie star would come up with just oh let's make the board four times bigger because that we find make make them have to put like screw on extra cue sticks to their snooker sticks so they can even hit the ball or use like other sticks to rest their snooker sticks on it's ridiculous have people who can knock in ball after ball after ball using some kind of trick photography i'm sure uh, but they were crying and they said they'd give me a million pounds um, if I moved this to today. So I moved it on Monday and I'm sorry if that confuses you. Um, but if someone gives me a million pounds, I will do anything they say. So that is, that's just uh, one of my rules of living. And I came close to death this year, very close. And, um, you know, I realised I have to think of my family first. And it's no good just doing this snooker for free. Got to start making it pay. And with 101 viewers in the in the room tonight, I think we can... 134, I think we can see. It's going pretty well. If I can start monetizing this. If, if each of those 134 people watching now would have given me £1,000, I'd have £134,000. If they gave me 10000 don't even know what that is, but it would be... 158, well, imagine there's 158 now, so imagine how much more money that would be. And I don't think that's unreasonable, £10,000 a frame. We'll finish off this tournament and then maybe maybe we'll start at £1,000 a frame, see how that goes. But I think people will snap those tickets up. 168 it's going up all the time. People have heard. Um, so anyway, yes, uh, we, uh, we're not any longer in the uh, Potty Veraye uh, arena. Um, his family got in touch, said they didn't appreciate the way I pronounced his surname. Also, that... Uh, they felt I was... I, this is not true. They felt I was mocking him f uh, for his dwarfism, which is not at all what I intended, nor did, I think. So I'm very upset the family thought that. Uh, so, um, again, probably breaking the news to some of you. Uh, the uh, Unfortunately, uh, Ricky Lowe uh, died today. Uh, he is... I hardly need to tell you who he is. He's a Filipino journalist and television host. Um, of Chinese descent, uh, you're probably known from Celebrity TV, or possibly the Philippine Star. Well, he's gone. I'm sorry, he had a stroke, and uh, he's gone. He's out. Um, so that's in honour of him. Hopefully, Ricky Low, and it feels like a snooker next. Someone that's a low scoring get frame feels right, and that he's called Ricky, and I'm called Ricky, sort of. So. It felt that that was right. Anyway, I, the quarterfinals you will be seeing today are me 15, Viking me versus me 18, oversharing me. What a piss show of a frame that is. To think one of those fuckers is going to be in the semi-final makes my blood boil. Because <laughs> they should both have gone out very early doors. Viking me, uh, the only player with an accent left in the whole competition. 
So that's something to, to mull over. And then a slightly more interesting frame of success for me, uh, who is a despicable person, but uh, not compared to his opponent, me 29, Meninist me. So uh, I guess, I don't know who I'm hoping to go through out of these this lot. Successful me, I guess. I don't want Meninist me to get any further. Though it would be interesting if Meninist me met female me in the final, which is a possible possibility. Um... I guess the Viking, I guess successful me is where my money would be, but uh, I think you can bet in the chat room. Thank you to uh, Pat D. Hill, who's just subscribed to Prime for nine months. Not too bad. Some people are up to 13 months, which is extremely nice of you. Um, if you want me to keep going with the Twitch stuff beyond uh, lockdown, I mean, I think we'll still do snooker regardless, but um, we'll probably do Twitch for fun regardless. But we, if you want other stuff going on, we'll, we will need to uh, have more subscribers. Um, otherwise, it'll just become an occasional little fun thing we do. Um, and I've got quite a lot of work all of a sudden, so I'm not quite sure how, how long Twitch of Fun will go on or whether it will take a little break. But I do love it, so um, hopefully we'll be okay. Uh, so, anything else I've got to tell you about? I don't think so. I mean, I think let's let let's let the snooker do the talking. First of all, let's. I uh, can just see you sitting down now. Um, here comes Viking me and me fifteen. He'll be breaking in the quarterfinal, which uh, if the last sixteen were anything to go by, is a pretty bad way to start. Only two of the people who broke first won their frames. I don't know if that'll scare me fifteen, who did go second when he beat uh, Impressionist me. That was a shame that Impressionist me got knocked out. That was a great character. Maybe I'll do a Super League of the ones that I like. Maybe that'll be the European Super League of the characters that I think are good. Uh, thank you to Niall Quinn, 1971. Subscribe to tier, tier 1. That's his actual own, their own money. A three-month streak. Thank you very much. If you're going to use your own money, I would advise you to become a monthly badger just because you get lots of extra stuff and um, Ian Amazon doesn't take any of your money. But, that, you know, it's still very much appreciated. We do get um, the most of the money you put in through that. Um, it's not all about money, okay? So, you know, it's about spreading the love. Let's talk to Viking Me. He's well sat down now. How are you doing? Well, hello, Richard. It is me, Viking Me. I hope you are okay. I'm looking forward to getting into the semifinals today. What, so why is that accent suddenly... Why are you doing an impression of, uh... It sound that to me sounded like the kind of a racist caricature that might appear in uh, an Asterix cartoon. No, no, Richard, I was speaking in a Scandinavian accent, and that's because I am from Scandinavia, and I like up to play the snooker. We've been playing it for a long time, since the Viking times, whenever those were, and now I am uh, in the modern day, but the most of the Vikings have died out. But I am still here. Bit uh, Canadian. We in, we discovered Ken Canada, and so that is why you Le Leif Erikson we discovered was he an actor? Yes, but also an historical figure, and he discovered America. So where and I like uh, eating bacon. Good. Well, that's uh, you know it's a fine character to have made it all this way. You know we had. You know, we had Samuel Beckett, uh, characters based on Samuel Beckett. We had, I mean, all the bit, the Neanderthal me whammed him. I mean, even angry me 32 is better than these lump of shit, aren't they? Uh, well, I let, uh, that, good luck in the in the quarterfinal. I can see oversharing me is just sitting down now. Hi, Richard. Yeah, good to be here. Um, just want to say I got a letter from um, my oncologist today. Oh, look, we don't want to talk about this. Yeah, I just think it's important everyone knows. Um, my the tumor that in uh, your testicle, not mine, because I have two testicles, uh, was six centimeters by four point five centimeters by uh, two centimeters. It's huge. It's as big. Someone said it's as big as a snooker ball. How did you not notice that was r rocking around in your bollock sack? Well, look, you're not meant to overshare about me. You meant to overshare about yourself. Um, I noticed it was getting bigger, but it was just getting bigger, I guess, either very quickly or just by tiny, tiny increments. And I already had quite a big uh, testicle to start with. All right, mate, no need to overshare. I, you know, I just, that you you asked. Um, and um, 
yeah, so you look, it's it's not as bad as it sounds. Well, that's as maybe, but I am looking forward to beating Viking me now. Um, the Vikings were terrible people. They uh, committed atrocities of all kinds. And uh, I do not approve of that. Well, that's, I'm glad to hear it, because probably out of all the four people we're going to see today, you're probably the only one who feels like that. Well, I don't know, but... Uh, all I can say, I got a quite an itchy anus today, so yeah, I hope that doesn't affect my play. All right, let's crack on. Let's uh, move over to the uh, Ricky Lowe. Sorry if you're joining us late. He's dead. 79 or 75, something like that. Philippines, born in China. You know who I'm talking about. Um, over to Commentator 1, Commentator 2. We moved the camera last week when I interviewed my wife, uh, so hopefully it's in roughly the right position um in the ricky low arena thank you richard great to be here i think it's a lovely positioning of the uh the old green board there um the min lid is closed for those who are interested in that and uh looks like the uh door to the secret room at the back is open hopefully none of richard's victims will escape i'm joking of course uh, it's where he keeps his files of his successful comedy career. I'm not being sarcastic. Um, we have me 15, Viking me playing, oversharing me. Let's get over with uh, referee. And here comes me 15. Is he coming from the side? That unusual doesn't usually happen. Um, that was a lovely shot. That's uh, me 18. He's one nil up. Can't get this black. He's worried about knocking in a red, and that's quite uh, that's quite uh, a uh, conservative bit of play from any of the players there. Calculating, calculating. Me 15, zero. Me 18, one. We're up to a blistering start. This is realistic snooker, where people sometimes miss. What's the point of watching snooker where people always get it? Okay. Miscount. Purposefully, you can recognise him by his Viking stance. Oh, the ball leaps. Leaping out of its sack, but this time it jumped back. Me. Oh, I thought that he probably made a bad choice about which ball to go for there. But uh, it's created a wonderful snooker of reds. Oh! I can't even remember whose go that was. Who does uh, Andy McH give that point to, I wonder? Let's see if he's giving it 2 0 or 1 all. I wonder if Andy McH was paying attention. I feel that it was probably. Andy McH isn't committing. I, f I feel it was probably oversharing me there, wasn't it? Is the t is the is my microphone fucked? One all. So that was Viking me got that. Okay. Hope you can. Well, Andy's uh, it's Andy's given it to uh, me fifteen. Someone's saying me eighteen. Viking me is the call. Chris Evans is telling me. Oh, he's put on the art. He's put on the Yeti mic. Hopefully, he can hear me now. Oh, it's very important whose go that was. If only there was some way of rewinding. Viking me has got to break a six. Could be a match-winning break. And it's not over yet. Oh, oh! So six points to Viking me. Takes him into a six-one lead. I tell you what, I'll just stretch out the thing. See if that makes any difference on the oversharing me has a lot of work to do now. And that didn't work. His little plan there didn't work. Viking me. Ooh, well, you don't see that on the World Snooker Championships, do you? Someone putting a cheeky little shot like that. 
came up behind. You thought you were just trying to knock it in. Oh, that was in and then it bounced out. Incredible scene. So Viking me, I think is on eight points. No, seven points. Seven, one, is that right? You got six, it was one or no, it's eight, one, it's eight, one. Uh, oh, I'm not going to listen to Andy McKech. Here comes a successful oversharing me. Here comes Viking me. Not the standard we were hoping for. At this level. Oversharing me. Need to do better than that. Viking me. Bit of Marmite on his chin there. He just licked it off. The Viking, here's the king, he's just going to nudge that behind the blue, he hopes he's got a snooker. Here's 9-1 ahead, that's according to me, oversharing me, can hit this red. Oh, and look at that, that's what you call a pot. It looked like he was going for a completely different red, but the cue ball rolled slowly at the table, hit another red, and in it went, and oversharing me. He's off, he's got another point on the board. Gaggling, gaggling, me 15, 9, me 18, 2. Faking me. This is a risky shot. I told you, Viking me, why did you not listen? Viking me gives away four points for an in off. And now it's anyone's game now. It looked like it was all over. But especially if oversharing me... Oh! Oversharing me knocks the brown with his finger. Gives four points away. <coughs> and is back to Viking me. <coughs> and that's the kind of mistake you really don't expect to see at this level. Uh, Viking me misses a fairly straightforward red. Oversharing me. Pots a uh, fairly straightforward red. I don't think there's anything he can really do here. He's going for the blue. Trying to get a snooker, may have done it. So I think it's 13-7. I think it's Viking Me's turn. And it's a lovely snooker. Oh, but brilliant. Yeah, almost. Another fantastic shot. Oversharing me, has to be careful not to pop the pink here. Nicely done. And is he going to pop the red? No. Viking me. Beautiful shot. Pots the red. Could be on for a break of four here if he plays his cards right. He's got the yellow. In fact, if he plays well, he could get on the black after this red. He's on a break of three. Oh, can he get this red without hitting the black? Oh. Was that oversharing me or Viking me? I really lost track of these two. That was Viking me. Three valuable points oversharing me. God. Has a chance to really come back into this though now. He pots the red. Surely he's going to get this black. He's got the black. And don't think it's going to go any further than that. But that's a pretty impressive high break of eight. Oh, hits both the reds. Doesn't get either of them in. It's 15 plays 16. Robot voice is broken down at the moment. Viking me. Nearly gets a red. Oh, after last week's fantastic play, this is a disappointment. Oversharing me, tries a double. Viking me, he's got a good chance of a red here. Oh, he hit it a bit too hard. It jingled and jangled in the pocket. Like Noel Clark picking up his phone. On vibrate. Oversharing me. Oh, fucks it up as well. Viking me. I'm really just naming them for myself, really. Oversharing me has a pretty easy shot here. And he didn't go even go down to table level to look at that. That was a weird bit of play there. Viking me not choosing to do the same. Oversharing me. Misses the red, gets it on the rebound, but pretty lucky. Viking me. It's oh, oh, oh. 
Nearly pops about three balls but gets nothing, but oversharing me has won the battle, I think. There he goes, he gets the red. That pink looks gettable for oversharing me. He's hit it a bit softly, but that's perfect. He scores an impressive break of seven. And it's not over yet. Can he get this red in somehow? He whacks it, hopes it'll go somewhere. It doesn't. Oversharing me is in the lead. Calculating, calculating, me 15, 16, me 18, 22, Viking me. He knows no one cares about this frame. Not even himself. Oversharing me. A weak shot, but is it going to go in? It's not, but that is a stone cold, fantastic snooker there from Oversharing me. Can Viking me get out of it? Yes, he can, but he's gone in off. Unlucky, brilliant bit of play to get out of it. But uh, oversharing me suddenly seems to be pulling away 10 points in the lead. He's at the hockey. All he has to do is pop this red and then all the other colours and he's won. He doesn't manage the red. Viking me. Aware of the magnitude and the importance of this match. He pots. That red, that's beautiful. That's probably the shot of the match. He's going for the pink. He's potted the pink. Oh, Viking me. He's gone in off. And that could be the moment. That could be it, my fan friends. Gaggleating, gaggleating. Me 15, 17. Me 18, 32. And imagine that 12 points difference if uh, he hadn't gone in off. Oh, and, Vi and Oversharing Me nearly thinks he's going for pink, which would have been funny. But he realises in time he's going for yellow. Which he pots. It's looking very good for this young lad from Cheddar. He's trying to double the green, doesn't make it. He is now on 34, he's got double the points. A Viking Me. Oh, Viking me, that is the shot of the match. A beautiful crisp punt of the green into the top pocket. Can he get this, can he double this brown? He's aiming for the bottom pocket. I thought he was going to go for the centre pocket. Kagli dink, he misses it. Kagli dink, kagli dink, me 15, 20, me 18, 34. And he's left on the brown that's pretty easy for oversharing me. Oversharing me, pots the brown, comes back for the blue. Oh, he should have done better with that. I mean, he should definitely have got that in. He's now 18 points ahead. 18 points on the table. <sighs> Exciting. Can Viking me get a snooker or can he just pop these three balls? He's got one of them. Is he going to try and play for the, re the replace black? And what happens in that situation? Oh, Viking me just has played a blinder and he's potted all the balls and got 18 points. It's a draw. And uh, referee won. Not quite sure about what happens here. I think we respot the black. Amazing. Whoever pots the black, not the blue. Amazing, amazing scenes here for this quarter final. Uh, how do we decide who goes first? Uh, both players are going to see who can get the closest to the D. So this is me 15. Viking me. Some way off. Oversharing me. Although, do you really want to go first in this one? I don't know. Oversharing me. Almost bang on. So oversharing me will be going first. He gets the first chance to pop this black. How's he going to do it? Oh! I mean, that is an utter disaster for oversharing me. And uh, Viking me laps up that chance. It takes him to 45 points. 45 plays 38. Quite astonishing scenes there. And no one quite sure if referee one has played the rules correctly or what. But Viking me is through. And I think we're all slightly relieved about that, if we're honest. That's the first semi-finalist, Viking Me 15, a player who before this tournament had uh, 
Played three, won one and lost two. He's won three in a row. And he's in the semi-final. His mum will be very proud. Uh, a lot of the people in the chat room happy. Some sad. Replay the frame, says Han, Ham Han 2000. That's what we used to do in the old days, but fuck that. And uh, a beautiful win for Richard for me 15. I hope you can interview him well in the chat room. Of course I can. Hello. Yeah, good to be back. And what an exciting frame that was. It wasn't the greatest snooker we've seen, but uh, a break of 18. How often do you see that? I mean, how often do you see that in two-player snooker that's so popular? Uh, Viking me tactically playing brilliantly there by deliberately not getting close to the D so that he could go second. Uh, me 15, I'm going to put break of 18 because that's quite extraordinary and he needed 18 to equal. Some people upset, but I think it's people who are betting on the match and, you know, if you're betting you're a loser, you shouldn't be doing that. Let's talk to, uh, first of all, oversharing me. How do you feel? Um, I feel all right about it. I, I, you know, I don't think I deserve to be this. In this, I think, you know, you shouldn't have minor characters like me even in this anymore. There's enough good characters. Oh, and that's you're not self-deprecating me. You're oversharing me. Well, what I've got to share, I lost. I'm, I'm, fuck you. That's angry me. You, you know, it's true. You haven't got a very good character. Let's talk to Viking Me. He's just sitting down. Well, hello, Richard. Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. What an exciting battle that was. It reminds me of the Battle of Trondheim, where it looked like we were going to lose. And then we came back and it was equal. And then we had a black ball was on the spot and we, we got it in. So we won. So I hope I see you in the finals. I certainly will see you in the semi-finals where I will be playing success of me. <laughs> Amen and it's me. Thank you very much. Well, let's move this on as quickly as we can. And uh, this is the the show frame coming up as referee one um, sets up the board behind us. Success of me 19 will be playing... Um, Meninist, me 29, boo. He's sort of the bad guy, but people love to hate him. So we'll see how this goes. Um, first of all, let's, I can just see you sitting down now in the chair. It's successful me. Uh, how you doing? Successful me. Hi, Rich. Yeah, pretty good. Feeling pretty cool. Uh, I've just been, um, I've been out on Richard Branston's, uh, Necker Island with all the celebrities during the pandemic and just I was making love with Bianca from EastEnders last night it was pretty good and um, just hanging out with H from Steps was there just uh, I'm successful what can I say and it's looking pretty good on old Necker Island Richard Branston was there uh, he was in a balloon that was crashing he fell off a bike he's a very accident prone man but I thought, hey, why not get a private jet back over to Hertfordshire to the Ricky Lowe Arena and uh, see if I can get myself into semi-final, which I'll be able to do because I'm successful. Yeah, don't worry, fans. I know a lot of my fans are out there. I can't believe someone of my stature would appear on something like this. But come on, I've just done well. Everything went well in my career. It's like I'm Richard Herring, but everything went right. You know what I'm saying? Rather than everything going... I got credit for creating Alan Partridge. Got 5% of that baby. Uh, then I made up my own character, uh, Alan Dartridge, even more successful uh, that I play. And uh, Steve Coogan gave up when he saw what I was doing. That's for sure. Cool. Do you think you, oh, do you, think you can... Um, do you think... <laughs> The thing I feel sad about you for, Richard, is that, you know, you've only got reading glasses. I've got sunglasses, and that's the difference between us. Yeah, I guess, you know, that is one of the differences. But, you know, you just look a lot more handsome than me. It's just kind of worked out pretty... I've had my hair cut today, by the way. You wouldn't know, would you? Fucking hell. £62 this cost me. All it's done is made me look greyer. Still look insane. Um, I had my hair cut today, Rich cost me five thousand pounds and i look beautiful look how it just looks like tousled and 
It do, it does. Yours looks much better than mine. I don't understand how that's worked out. Do you think you were going to win the thing? Yes. Uh, hold on. Yes, I do. I think I'm going to win the frame snooker. Sorry, just my reading glasses fell off. Why are you talking in that accent? It's my successful voice accent, Richard. And uh, yeah, I think I'll win. I hope so, because... You know, I think Menace Me is going to find it pretty hard to recreate something as amusing as this glasses swapping bit we've got worked out. So uh, it reminds me that we were waiting for Gatto. I wish Samuel Beckett Me was still in, but uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, successful Me, 19. I mean, I am hoping he wins. That's how ridiculous this is because his opponent is just sitting down now. Me, 29. Menace Me. Votes for men. We have votes for men. Votes for men, only men, Richard. That was the first mistake they made, was giving the, the bitches the the vote. Why do they count out? Just because they ju threw themselves in front of a horse? Come on. You can't just give people who throw themselves in horses everything they want, or just everyone will throw themselves in horses. Well, no one's done that really since, have they? Yeah. They will, though. I'm not sure they will. Um, so, I mean... Yeah, you got through by... I mean, it would be very exciting to see you up against... Uh, and not literally up against, but playing um, me 11 in the final. Yeah, I hope that'll happen, because I'll show you who's best men or women. It'll be men, uh, and better at playing themselves at snooker. Uh, superior to women in every way. And yet, because of the system, you push pushed down. So we don't even get fair representation in a, in a male-created, male-dominated sport. Well, I mean, to be fair, Men and Me, there's only one woman in this whole competition. And the gay one, that's not a woman, it's a man. So that's um, just a horrible thing to say. Um, uh, do you think you can take success from me? He's very successful, unlike you. You live with your mum and you've broken up with your wife. All right. Look, just because I speak the truth, some of the bitches don't like it. Can you stop using that word, please? Some of the uh, women don't like it. It was that so hard, and uh, you know that makes me hard to live with for some of them. But uh, I, you know, I they love me and they want me, and that's that. Is, I've I'm so alluring, it's like a very powerful magnet. It just starts to repel. Uh, think about that. Yeah, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Let's hope uh, we can just get this over with quickly. And let, I mean, God, I hate successful me as well, of course, because he reminds me of all of my own failures. But. Um, Let's see how he gets on. We're, we're head back, hopefully, to uh, see, a, see a referee one having set up or we'll just be finishing off setting up the board now. Oh, referee one. Thanks, Richard. Um, but unfortunately, referee one was called into the uh, referee's office to discuss his decision to of whose go it was next. Um, and uh, got away with it, apparently. They said it was fine. That was probably... No one was quite sure what you do in that situation. They said, well done for coming up with an idea of that. And uh, we're all happy. That's what they said. So um, this is a big frame here. Two big characters. Two heels in a way. Both of them heels. I would say, wouldn't you commentate too? Yeah, I would call them heels. And uh, yeah, up against each other uh, to possibly play... I mean, Viking me, not a particularly nice character either. I mean, there's a lot of characters inside Richard Herring who are unpleasant. And you have to ask yourself why that is. There's people who are perfectly pleasant, like me. Occasionally I make a mistake with my commentary. I will I'll admit to that. But um, basically I'm a nice guy. And commentator 2 is all right as well. Here we are anyway. It is me 19 to break. Me 29 to follow. The referee hasn't put the scoreboard back to zero. Hopefully, the referee will remember whose turn it is. I'll each go now. Me 19, success for me. Look at his swagger. Oh, I'm pretty sure he hit the pink first there. And I hate to admit it, but so referee one thinks so too. That's six points to Meninist me. That is a nasty start. And Meninist me might be snookered. He is snookered too. So if he's snookered, he can go for anything he wants. Oh, no, he's not snookered. Here we go. Oh, he's potted. Two reds are nearly three, to be honest, because there's one at the top there, so that's pretty good for men and it's me. Can he get anything else in? He thinks he can get this blue. Oh, he hits it just too lightly. 
but two points for a break of two. And uh, successful me, this could be his Waterloo. A very successful song for Abra, of course, so it depends what you think I mean by that. Successful me, he's got a break of one. Can he pop this black into the centre pocket or the end pocket? Oh, I think he was going for the centre pocket. Calculating, calculating, me 19, one, me 29, eight, me 29. Easily pots a nice red right over the pocket. He's come back for the blue, beautiful bit of placing, and he's potted the blue. He's gone back up the table to nudge another red off the top cushion. Not sure that's really helped him, but a break of six at this stage could put this frame out of the or oh, bad shot for the for the for the red. But he's up to 14, playing one successful me. Pat's been parting too hard. Is he going to get lucky? No. And Meninist me. Maybe because he gets no time with any girlfriends or wives. Gets more time to play on the old snooker board. And successful me who's just gone in off. And this is looking very bad for successful me. Some people think by winning this so getting so far in this tournament, successful me has proved himself to be not a success because this is the kind of thing someone who's successful wouldn't do. Maybe he's caught in that dichotomy. Oh, beautiful shot from that was a beautiful shot from Men and it's me. Sends it. Looked like he's going for the top left. Ends up potting in the bottom right with a nice little nudge from uh, one of the balls. He's going to go for the blue. I think this is ambitious. Oh. And the luck's just stick, sticking with Meninist Me. He ball clatters against the black near the top of the pocket, but it doesn't go in. Successful Me. Nearly goes in off again. Oh, I think this is Meninist Me all the way. He's potted again. Is he going to go in? Of course not. He's going for the green. Can he get it past the black? No. But he was nicely on a, a red, which is good news for Successful Me. The only bit of good news from this frame so far for successful me. All right, he's potted a red, doubling his score. Can he put together a decent break here? Oh, he slams that blue. It hovers in the pocket like uh, someone were using a jack pack to get onto a ship like I saw on the news today. That's a topical reference. Can he get this up to seven? Yes, he can. Oh, no, he can't. He's got a break of six. He hit the ball in, but the cue ball followed in. So it's only an aggregate of two for the successful me. Calculating, calculating, me. Successful me, seven. Meninist me, 29, 29, 24. And computer voice getting a bit confused there, I think. Here comes Meninist me. Bloody hell, that was an incredible pot. I mean, if you're listening to the audio, please watch that because that was unbelievable. Not only potted, he's completely on the pink, which is also potted. It's just going completely going his way. Is he snooking himself? I don't think he's even snooking himself. He's got a break of seven. Could be a break of eight if he hits this one right. He's hit it right. A break of eight could be a break of 16 if he hits this one right. Oh no, he hasn't hit that one right, but it's a uh, lovely break of eight takes the scores to calculate, think, calculate, think. Me 19, seven, me 29, 32. This is a long way to go. Herring manoeuvre needed for successful me. That's not it. Meninist me. Oh, he's just the, he's the best player. He deserves it. His views might be wrong, but his snooker play is just sublime. Oh, he's gone in off. A, li a little ray of hope. Two points to Meninist Me, but four points to Successful Me. It's 11 plays 34. Meninist Me. Seems to got this in the bag, but can successfully do anything about it? Here he comes. Oh, that was an amazing shot. Another shot where it looked like he'd missed. It hit the top cushion, came back, 
hit the green and potted it all the way down the table. Absolutely unbelievable. He's trying to do another double. That one hasn't worked, but he might have got a snooker. And Menelis Knee only 20 points behind with 22 on the table. And a possible snooker. It is a snooker. And Menelis Knee's going to have to come off the top pocket. He's hit the blue. It's a bad miss. Five points to success for me. Can he do this? 19 plays 34. No, that wasn't good. Unless it's a snooker. Which case it was good. It's not a snooker, I don't think, no. Men and it's me. Might have got a snooker of his own. That's a better one. That's a really good one. Success or me? Oh, what a brilliant. Th off three cushions to get out. That nearly goes in off. Success or me? Oh, I'm sorry, men and it's me. Hampered by a beam. Look at that, that was an amazing shot, given he was hampered by a beam. Oh, and is that going to go in? No. So, we're going to get up to speed with what's happening here. Calculating, calculating, me 19, 19, me 29, 38. There's 19 points between them. There's 18 on the table. Successful me is snookered. He doesn't want to pop this, this blue if he can help it. And he hasn't potted it, and he's hit it, so that's good, but right over the pocket. Oh, man, it's me hit that way too hard. What was he thinking? It, it choked in the, in the throat of the pocket. And successful me still needs a snooker. And that's, he uses the deadening bottom cushion to good effect. Man, it's me. Has he doubled it in? He has. What a shot. And man, it's me. I think he deserves this inevitable victory. He nearly gets to the pink in as well. Menonis me cruising. He's on 43. He's playing 19. There's 13 on the table. Successful me has gone in off. I don't think there's any way out of this for successful me. He won't give up. That's how he became successful. He just persisted. But Menonis me... Could be booking, look at that, oh, nearly. Could be booking a semi-final place and then a final place with me 11. Successful me, just doesn't know what to do. Menonist me, just has been confident all the way through this. Slightly fucks that up. Successful me, I mean it's over. He's potted it, I think he knew it was over. Tries to double the blue, black at the table. At least he's got into over 20 points. He's on 25, plays 49. It's an absolute whitewash. 25, 49. We've got Viking me versus Menonist me in the next round. That's what we've got. It's been decided. Congratulations, Menonist me. Commiseration success for me. Enjoy Richard talking to him because this will be the last time you see him for a little while. Thank you very much. That was uh, super exciting. Um, good to just get through it, and it? That's the thing. It's good just to move one step closer to it being over. We've got the rest of the quarterfinals next week. We've got the semi-finals the week after and then the final at some point in the week after. Not on the Monday because I'm doing Rahala Stupa by then. Do come and see Rahala Stupa at the Clapham Grand. We know two of the names. We're now down to the last six players in this tournament. We started with 40. We're down to six. Me 15 versus me 29. Who else will join them next week? Me 4 plays me 27. Me 4, Serious Me, Me 27, of course, uh, Total Recall Me, Me 34, Motorcycling Me, I believe, playing Me 11, the last female in the tournament, and the only female in the tournament. <sighs> Someone's on 259.9k on uh, the betting there, so well done on that. Uh, a lot of betting going on, I don't know if I approve that. 
but congratulations. Let's talk to uh, uh, successful me first, uh, see how he's doing. Hold on. Yeah, Rich, look, hey, I've, I'm glad I'm knocked out because I've got to go back to Necker Island. Uh, Barbara Windsor's there, and I um, think I might be in. She wasn't saying much when I was chatting her up, but uh, I felt that was a good sign. So we will see. I'm going to the old Harvey Weinstein's out there. Uh, Kevin Space is out there, Noel Clark's out there. We're going to have a great time. So uh, no questions asked, no laws on Necker Island. Uh, just for clarification, I should point out, I think you've confused Necker Island with um, the paedophile island that Harvey Wein Weinstein ran. And I would like to say that there is no suggestion that Richard Branston um, has any such thing going on in his charming island. I think it's worth saying that. Well, Rich, I've been to Decker Island and you haven't, so who should we listen to? You or me, the cool guy with the lovely grey hair or the stupid guy with a ridiculous haircut? Yeah, I mean, I have got... Look, it's just true. My hair looks bad, yours looks good. So you've got that. Yeah, Rich, I didn't need to win the snooker because I've won at life. And I know the snooker's important to you and I came down here just to give you a little hand because I feel guilty that... You know, it's got so well for me and that you were once me and then whoosh, sliding doors, isn't it? Literally. The, I should point out there is a sliding doors me, so don't bring sliding doors into it or it'll be bad. Thanks. Yeah, we wouldn't want to confuse people with the characters. Thanks, Rich. I've really enjoyed being in. Uh, you know, this is this is it's, it's been interesting to lose, to be to be frank. Cool. Now, uh, let's talk to Meninist Me. Wears the same glasses as me, but doesn't share the same views as me. How are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling this is a victory for the patriarchy and for men. Uh, do not feel the patriarchy yet is actually damaging to most men. I mean, that it's uh, an elite that does well. And and that, in fact, you know, all the things that you seem to blame women and, and immigrants and anyone who isn't like you on, uh, you know, it's actually down to the the men you are supporting, the Boris Johnsons, the Etonians of this world, who all don't give a fuck about you. No, I don't accept that. It's down to women, basically them all being whores, um, and not wanting to be whores with me. That's what it's basically down to. They're whores who suddenly get very, very principled when they meet me. Well, I'm I'm very upset you've made it to the final. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Oh, sorry, semi-final. Sorry, red the wrong page on the script there um hopefully i mean it's either viking me or men and it's me in the final fucking hell <sighs> right well come back next week hopefully on monday i think it should be monday me four versus me 27 i'm gonna write it in now me four versus me 27 and me 34 I'm ahead of the game, me 11, and then we already know the first semi-final, SF, is uh, me 15 versus me 29. Four is the lowest number player in the competition, 34 is the highest. You know, that's the kind of statistics I can give you. Uh, we'll be back next week, hope you enjoyed it. Keep uh, watching the real snooker, do come and see us at the Clapham Grand live if you can. Uh, if you can't see us live, you can stream it live. And it's pretty cheap. I think it's 12 quid to watch both shows. There's two shows. I don't know. What never been tried before. Two sh interviews in the same night. Be would love to see it at the theatre. We'd love it to have great atmosphere there. I'm not sure how it's selling. But it's selling some. But, you know, it's, we, it's a big theatre. But they're not letting that many people in. So uh, do book ahead. We've got... Um, Sarah Kendall in the first one. We've got Johnny Vegas on the 31st of May. We've got No Such Thing as a Fish on the 14th of July. And we've got Robin Asquith. Oh, sorry, 14th of June and Robin Asquith on the 5th of July. Uh, there will be other names added to that. There'll be 10 names in all. And uh, sorry, no Rahula Stapa this week live. Uh, May Martin can't do tomorrow night, so we're going to pick it up in the daytime. And we're not going to put it out on Twitch because not enough people have subscribed. How does it feel? Also, just because it's in the middle of the day. So it'll be a nice surprise for you when it comes out as a podcast. Um, thanks for watching, guys. It's all I care about. You don't have to subscribe. Take care of yourselves and each other. From me and all the me's. Goodbye.